Hello y'all, this is Ninja DC. Today we're going to be talking about fan fiction and fan fiction to cite respectfully, as my cat gets comfortable in my lap. Love it or hate it, fan fiction to stories are a defining feature of fandom culture dating back to the dawn of popular fan fiction. From Sherlock Holmes to MLP, and actually even before Sherlock Holmes, probably dating back before the written language. Fan fiction and fan fiction provide two of the most popular outlets for fans to share, enjoy, and critique other fans' stories in a safe environment. Unless you're a screenwriter or poet, then you're bucked. As these sites consider your work worse than slash or PDP like word porn. Seriously, I'm at a loss to find the logic in this at all, as this negatively affects all parties. And the only logic that comes to mind is fan fiction and fan fiction essentially being like. Lawsuit for you! Yeah, I'm not much of a Seinfeld fan, but I'm going to be using that clip a lot. Let me just get my biases out of the way before we start. Yes, I wrote a feature length screenplay for fan fiction where before releasing I found the no script clause. I seen found similar clause on fan fiction has been basically pissing people off for several years. However, this is not my about my screenplay, nor will I use this video as an advertisement for it. That's cheapening the issue. So I not mention a character, plotline, or even the working title. This issue is much bigger than that, and I'm not going to cheapen it by any way involving my thing. I just brought it up so you know my bias is going in, so I can be fair and open about that. Now on with the feature presentation. And why don't we start with the common arguments I hear like, no one will be interested. Yeah, I call bull on this for several reasons. First off, yes, scripts can be enjoyable to read, especially if you're in the scripts. This applies to film, TV, and play scripts. Are they as easy to read as novels or short stories? No, of course not. But many still enjoy their unique pacing and narrative style. Not to mention many stories are best at scripts because of that. I'm sure many of you heard this comparison that it was better in the book and so on and so forth. The same applies that sometimes something made for a screenplay is best as a screenplay and not converted into a novel, no matter what authors will tell you. Tools of production always influence the art after all, and the same is true for format. So if you want to be stubborn about scripts not being enjoyable to read, let me just ask you this question. Do you seriously believe every single Shakespeare anthology sold in every single bookstore in the world was bought with the sole intention of being made into a play? What really makes all this irrelevant, however, is the fact that both fan fiction and fan fiction already approve of questionable material for niche reading interest. Yes, I'm talking about clop fix and gore fix. Don't even try to deny them. Look, I've been interviewing bronies for over two years for my documentary work, and most, by a large margin, either mockingly laugh at the mention of clop fix and cloppers or rage. And when I say they rage, I mean they are sickened by their mere existence, and more specifically their association with fellow bronies. Personally, I don't give a buck. Like what you like. Right, what you like, I'm from the anime fandom, Rule 34 is much worse there. I'm used to it, to say the least. I'm fine with clop fix and gore fix, like cupcakes for example, as long as they are properly labeled, so you know people who are not interested in reading them, like most bronies, will be able to easily avoid it. Excluding it becoming meme status, and yeah, like cupcakes, everyone sort of gets a laugh out of it, or just pretends it doesn't exist. Either way. And that is all I'm asking for scripts, which are much less offensive by their nature. Needless to say, I find this a critical flaw in the no one will read argument. Why are fanfic and fanfic for scripts being so Nothing for you when they approve of other niche interest? The logistical reasons are only slightly better, and you know the whole it'll be hard to pre-read or will be swamped with bad fanfics, that one I hear a lot. Yeah, let me break this down. First off, scripts are very easy to format check and pre-read both film and play. They are literally designed that way with their very segmented structure and strict formatting guidelines. They are very easy to well be analyzed. Once trained, a person can pick out a bad script at a glance and also what can be fixed or improved with it. These also provides us with a solution to the swarm of horrible scripts fear. Having a strict format guideline for submissions would cut that clutter down significantly. I mean, significantly. If that's not properly formatted for a screenplay or play, then it gets instantly rejected with a little note saying look up the proper formatting. For example, this script has improper use of slug lines to establish scenes, and this story has blatantly off spacing. And this script, just, no. If they want to submit scripts, they have to submit actual scripts after all. It's not really the pre-reader's job to teach you how to write. I'll admit, this will require new training for current and new pre-readers for script pre-readers, but it's not learning another language. It would only take a few hours of added lessons by one use to the format. I, amongst other screenwriters, will be more than willing to help training, in terms of fundamentals and additions to existing pre-reader lessons, whatever they are. However, as I noted, with this training, pre-readers could cut through the scripts with extreme efficiency, 
far surpassing normal pre-readers, so it's not really a logistical nightmare as many would believe. Now let's talk at the true missed opportunities in ignoring scripts. One obvious one is a growing trend in brony fandom for femfic readings, where a person or group will narrate a popular and or interesting femfic. A fem script is, well, tailor-made for such media and would encourage more of them in fandom. Another obvious aspect that would make fan script contests much easier to organize, you know the whole being made readable on a popular site like Femfix or Fanfic, or heck, in that regard, it would be easier for animation and video groups to quickly sample a writer's work before they sign them on. However, the true missed opportunity lies within the negative effects it has on screenwriters within the Brony fandom and, well, every fandom. Look, fanfiction, since its creation, has always been a helpful tool for new storytellers. By creation, I'm talking about even before written language, when stories were told around a campfire or Oh, a cave fire. Fan fiction uses a pre-existing narrative mold for young storytellers to better their craft and just as importantly provide them with a pre-existing audience willing to listen, with thoughtful feedback with their prior knowledge of said material. A fruit of this idea is already very visible in sites like fan fiction, where fan stories get better and better alongside their audience, even creating some fan hits like the famous Fallout Equestria series. While we are on the subject, let me use Fallout Equestria as another example. What if Fem Fiction had adopted another silly policy and not allowed crossover stories? Without the stable home for their fiction, what if KCAT never released Fallout Equestria altogether? Or released it on a site like DeviantArt that just does not have the ways to properly promote stories that well? If that illogical rule existed, then we would have not had the cult hit with just south of half a million views that has gone on to spin off into several other stories on top of inspiring hundreds of its own fan fiction, or inspire other various forms of media including animation, games, art pics, radio dramas, songs, and so on and so forth all because it was restrained by a silly, illogical rule of its own. Look, screenwriters and playwrights are artists, and like all artists, we live to bring entertainment and joy to other people. Audience praise and criticism are just as essential to sustain us as the food we eat. We need that interaction and fan motivation to improve ourselves and our work. By being illogically- No soup for you! We're essentially dooming the entire artist community to vote die. Look, I love the brony fandom, that's why I'm making several documentaries on them. It's a fandom renowned for fostering young artists in terms of 2D drawers, musicians, comics creators, writers, animators, and so on and so forth. Please, Femfic and Fanfic, if by some obscure chance you are listening to this video, please, please remove this negative policy and give screenwriters the same opportunities that other writers have within the fandom. <sighs> well, this is an NGDC. Keep calm and actually buck this. Today I'm not letting this issue go with just one video. Today I will launch the platform, well announce the future launch of a platform to give Fem Scripts a home until Femfic and Fanfic stop being No soup for you! In the coming weeks I'll be launching the Fem Scripted Podcast. Google Hangout, whatever you want to call it. Fem Scripted will be a bi-weekly show at launch where Fem Scripts of episode length will be read live by fan VAs in a radio show format. One very red series where basically their VAs are enacting the real version of those characters and one not so serious where they get to have some fun. As she sobs and gallops, she passes Golden Harvest who sports green hair. <gasps> <laughs> Further details will be provided in the film scripted video launching alongside this one. Until then, as I was saying, keep calm and an open mind.